What's up everybody, it's Charles. Today, I'm installing a big brake kit on the GTI, and I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to share some of my tips on doing brakes with you guys. Before we get to those tips, big ups to CRC for providing some chemicals, some technical advice, and for sponsoring this video. Of course, as always, I'll put links to everything that we talk about today down in the description. With that, let's get into some must follow tips for doing your brakes. Tip number one, safely lift our vehicle. Whenever we're lifting our vehicle to do brakes or anything else, we wanna make sure that we're using the proper lift points on our car, as well as securing it on jack stands. Regardless of what anyone else says, be sure that you're lifting your car and securing it on jack stands properly. Another really quick tip is to take the wheel that we just removed, slide it underneath the vehicle. That way if the jack and the jack stand fail, there's one more thing to catch our car. I also like to slip some cardboard right underneath where I'm working to catch any dirt or any fluids that may spill while doing the brake job. Tip number two, turn the wheel for easier access. Turning our wheel is gonna give us easy access to the bolts on the caliper. Oftentimes it's tricky to get something like a breaker bar behind there without turning the wheel. Tip number three, clean the caliper slide pins. As you can see here, our caliper slide pin has a good bit of buildup on it. This is the piece that the caliper actually slides back and forth on, so we wanna make sure that we thoroughly clean the slide pins. When it comes to these slide pins or any other brake parts, if anything is questionable, go ahead and replace it. This adds maybe a minute or two to the brake job and is super easy to do. We'll start by taking some brake parts cleaner, spraying it on a rag and cleaning the slide. You can see here how much contamination was on that pin. If you have a slide pin with some extra stubborn stuff on it, use a scouring pad and brake cleaner to remove it. Give it one final cleaning and you're good to go. If your caliper slide pins have a boot like this one, we have a couple of extra steps. We need to inspect and test the dust boot. Pull the slide pin back and forth and be sure the boot doesn't pop right off of the slide pin or the caliper carrier. If the boot pops right off, you're gonna need to replace it to prevent contamination from getting into the caliper carrier. After we check that dust boot, we want to remove the slider pin, remove the boot, use our brake parts cleaner to clean off any old grease, do a really good inspection on that slider pin to be sure it's not bent or worn. I like to also clean the grease out of the carrier as well. Something like this bottle brush works great to get inside of here. If that slider pin is good, apply some high quality caliper grease to the pin. This bottle's nice because it has a little brush on it. So just brush a little bit of grease on. I also like to take the greased slide pin and slide it in the carrier first. This puts a little grease into the caliper carrier and distributes it evenly on the pin. Now take your slide pin, install the dust boot and install it on the carrier. Do one more quick check of the tension on that dust boot, then move on to the next caliper slide pin. Tip number four, do not let the brake caliper hang by the brake hose. When we remove the caliper to replace the pads and rotors, don't let the caliper just hang from the brake line. This causes extra stress on that brake line and can lead to failure. I like to use bungee cords, Simply slide the bungee cord through the caliper like that. If your bungee cord's too long, you can knot up the end of it like mine is. Then go ahead and hang it from the suspension. This keeps the caliper out of the way and you don't have to worry about damaging the brake line. Tip number five, clean the rotor mounting surface and hub. If there is rust built up on the wheel hub where the rotor mounts, this can cause the rotor to not sit properly. In extreme cases, this can actually increase rotor runout and cause a brake vibration on your brand new brakes. I like to use either a wire brush or if it's a really severe case, a wire wheel on a drill, then spray it with some brake parts cleaner and wipe it down. If you're in an area with a lot of rust, it's a good idea to apply a little bit of anti-seize to the hub. A little bit of anti-seize will make removing the rotor next time quite a bit easier. Just remember here that a little bit of this does go a really long way. There is no need to tin man that wheel hub. Tip number six, clean your brake rotors. Most rotors will come with an anti-corrosion treatment to prevent rusting while they're sitting on the shelves. You can see here on this rotor, it has a heavy coating of oil to prevent rust. We need to make sure that we get all of this oil off. On this one, even though it doesn't have that heavy coat of oil, we still need to clean it. We'll take our brake parts cleaner, spray down the rotor and wipe it off. Even though that one looked pretty clean, you can see how dirty it was. If it's really stubborn or has a lot of oil on it, spraying it down with brake parts cleaner, then use a scouring pad to clean it and wipe it down again. Here we see how much dirt we actually left on the rotor. Be sure to flip it over 
and do the other side. Tip number seven, secure the rotor while you're working. If your vehicle uses lug nuts, slide your rotor on and then spin an open end lug nut to hold the rotor. This car uses lug bolts, so I like to use an old drain plug to hold the rotor in place so it's not flopping around while I'm trying to work. Even if the rotor has a securing screw, this will help seat the rotor properly. Tip number seven is flush your brake fluid. Most manufacturers recommend doing a brake fluid service every two years. The fluid that we use in our brake system is hygroscopic, which means that it attracts and holds moisture. This is a good thing because we don't want that moisture in our brake lines. But as the brake fluid holds more and more moisture, this can change the boiling point of our fluid and negatively impact our brake's performance. There's a lot of overlap to replacing your pads and rotors and doing a brake fluid service, so you can actually save some time by doing them together. Tip number nine, pump the brakes. Because we've installed new pads and pushed that caliper piston back, we need to pump our brakes. Pumping our brakes is going to push the caliper piston back up against the pad and the pad into the rotor. Until you pump that brake pedal a few times after doing your brake job, you're not going to have brakes that function properly. I like to also hold that pedal for about five to 10 seconds, then go around the car and make sure that I don't have any leaks. I have seen everything from damaged toolboxes to broken arms and a lot of close calls from people not pumping the brake pedal after a brake job. And finally, tip number 10 is to bed in those new brake pads. After installing new brakes, especially high performance ones like this, it's so tempting to just get out and smash them as hard as you can on that first stop. But we wanna be sure that we properly mate the new pad and the new rotor. This process can vary depending on the brake manufacturer. For the pads I'm installing today, the bed-in procedure is a series of light braking, followed by letting the brakes cool down a little bit, then increasing to moderate braking, then increasing to heavy braking. This allows the pads to slowly heat up and properly mate to the new rotors. Be sure to check with the brake pad manufacturer on their specific bed-in procedure. I'll also add to that, if you are doing this, make sure you're being safe and aware of other vehicles around you. And ultimately, if you're in a situation where you've got to stop the car, Stop the car and don't worry about betting in the pads. All right, guys, so there we have it. 10 tips for doing your own brakes. What other tips do you guys have for doing a great brake job? Drop that down in the comments. I'll put links to everything we used and talked about today down in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you again next time.